Good afternoon and welcome to the Tyre Power Tasmania Super Sprint. We're just outside Launceston in Tasmania for race four of the V8 Supercar Championship. This beautiful location just outside Launceston for Simmons Plains and what's been a very exciting V8 Supercar weekend. There's lots to do in and around Tasmania, a popular holiday destination and the major focus this weekend of the V8 Supercars Championship. We're about to see 120 kilometres of racing this afternoon, a track that opened way back in 1960, hosting Australian Touring Car Championship races since 1969. A brief pause in the years 2000 through to 2003. And uh, we've been proudly coming here for a long period of time, Mark Scape, to witness some great racing on this racetrack, a little less than 2.5 kilometres, seven turns the journey around here and a premium on brakes at this location and traction out of that hairpin. Always guaranteed of action, particularly under brakes into this area here. And then again for the second big stop about 17 or 18 seconds later, heading into turn number six. Very much the talking point of the weekend, getting the car behaviour right here and phasing tyre temperatures has been about managing what was a big headwind yesterday. And it's been varying a lot today. And you've just come in from downstairs. I was outside a moment ago, Mark. It's really bitterly cold out there at the moment. That may very well change the way in which these cars operate around here. 100%, Neil. That's a lot colder. It's about four or five degrees ambient cooler than before. The wind has definitely picked up. And it's much more on the nose of the car, meaning back towards the north, which is the headwind into turn six. And uh, from pit lane, I was, I was staggered. It was seriously cold as I was walking back up here. So cars are out on the circuit at the moment. If you didn't catch our coverage earlier in the day, pole has gone to Mark Winterbottom with a time of 51.15 seconds. It's going to be a very busy afternoon on the racetrack and in the pit lane. Let's get downstairs with Greg Murphy. Craig Lowndes, uh, typically Simmons Plains put on another amazing qualifying session. I mean, it is so close at the front of this, this place. Just missed out on pole, though. Yeah, we did. I think that, uh, look, I think that uh, for us, we had a really good first run, our second set of tyres. I think we're on a better lap time, but uh, I buggered up turn six, just locked up a front, right, uh, front left going in. Just couldn't clear it enough. But, uh, of course, as you said, everyone up and down pit lane have uh, been obviously trying to get slipstreams, trying to, try to get every advantage you can around this short track. But uh, we're on the right place. We're at the front of the field, and we've obviously now just got to get that reaction, good start, and see where we end up. She's a tricky one down to the uh, first little complex of corners up over the hump. You get a jump, you get, you get your nose ahead of the guy beside you, but he still hangs in there and gets the inside line for turn two. Well, you do, and I think if you can hang in, though, on the outside of turn two, you're in, on the inside of three, which you can't really run two abreast through there. So uh, that is the plan, but, uh, of course, we'll wait and see what happens. Wait, Good on you, mate. Cheers, thanks. So the boys have just shut the engine off here at Gary Rogers Motorsport. They've had a couple of cracks at this. A very nervous Scott McLaughlin beside us here off the fourth row. What's going on? Uh, just rolled out then and uh, I was on seven cylinders. So I don't know what was going on. It was fine when I rolled him back from qualifying. So, yep. Um, yeah, we'll find out if the boys can fix something. They've fixed the miracles, so we should be right. Okay, what's the initial indication? You shook your head again a minute ago. They've tried a couple of times. It doesn't seem to have oh, made any progress. I shook my head because it sounds messy. So, um, yeah, it's one of those things. It's just hard because I, I would have told them there was a drama beforehand. So, real weird. But, um, no, the boys will get onto it. They'll fix something and uh, we'll just get on. But just, yeah, it's unfortunate. Fingers crossed, mate. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Well, Davison, uh, he's decided to stay in the car. It's bit cold out there mate you like you got the best spot in here and it's not usually the place for for wanting to be when temperature wise in the cabin but uh, hey mate great job today things are really starting to fall into place by the looks of it just getting a handle on this triple eight car yeah starting to uh starting to get to grips with it which i was pretty sure i was sort of towards the end of the grand prix there um but it's good to obviously then back that up and have a good day yesterday and and put it up somewhere near the front in the ballpark and uh just progression's the big thing and um yeah, anyway, we're going to have a good race now from P5. It's always pretty pretty tight and twisty last year uh, around here, so hopefully nothing like last year at the hairpin. No, we're looking forward to it, mate. Yeah, hopefully nothing like that. That's been referenced a bit. Good luck. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks. Scott, Scott Byer, just outside the 10, I'm sure you would have been happier to be a bit further up the grid. Yeah, for sure. I think that, uh, I mean, it's so tight around here. It's just a little mistake and it puts you back. But really, we just 
just don't quite have the balance that we're looking for at the moment. I mean, Fabian's a few spots up and just, uh, I think he's three hundredths in front of me or something like that, so it's super close. But for sure, I mean, we don't really want to be just inside the 10. We'd like to be at the, you know, inside the top five or just at the back of that. But yeah, I think our race car hopefully is good. Some of the balance issues we've had, I think, will be fixed with a, a good fuel load in the back. So. We'll see. I think we're feeling okay for the race. Just we'd like a bit more quality speed. So you feel you've got a better race car than qualifying car at the moment? Yeah, definitely. I think there's a good opportunity to overtake here as well. I'll wait for the first lap to settle down, see where we're at, and then see if I can pick a few off. Thanks, Scott. Good luck. Yes, thank you. Second fastest on Friday afternoon was another brilliant performance by the reigning Dunlop Series champion Cameron Waters. Unfortunately, qualifying didn't quite go to plan. But Tim Edwards, team boss, says you didn't get a full shot at it, did you? You ran off, something happened, you were, there was some rubbish down coming down to six? Yeah, I was on, I was on another quick lap and um, I think I was probably on for about fourth. And there was all dirt and stuff everywhere and I couldn't really see. And I missed my brake marker by about five metres and um, yeah, locked the front. So didn't get to finish that lap, which was a shame, but still in 12. So. Um, yeah, pretty happy where we are. Just got to try and finish this race and then um, hopefully tomorrow we can move forward a bit. Keep your chin up, mate. Everyone's very impressed. Thanks, buddy. Chris Pitha, this is a great result for you after qualifying. Your best qualifying result in V8 Supercars. Yeah, pretty happy. Uh, top 15 was the aim this weekend and we've managed to do that for the first race today. So uh, just need to stay out of trouble and hopefully move forward a few. Uh, this race is sort of a little bit up in the air at the moment. People aren't exactly sure what's going to happen in terms of whether fuel is going to happen. Is that something you've discussed with the engineer at the moment? Yeah, it is, but we're not really too sure, to be honest. We're just going to sort of see how it plays out, I think, for now. I think um, probably relying on safety cars and different things. So um, there's going to be a few different strategies played out. It'll be interesting to see. Thanks, Chris. Good luck. Cool. Thank you. Hey, mate. Uh, Lee Holtz, it's a, it's a great feeling to be able to... <laughs> see the front of the grid, I can see, the, I can see the lights. <laughs> it's a bonus. No, it's good. Um, yeah, obviously a good place to start. You don't want to get caught up in traffic around here, so I'm sure with the guys around me, they're pretty speedy, so I uh, won't get too held up, but uh, you know, if we do, that's probably a good chance to take a pit stop. Um, low degradation, so people will be pitting at any point in this race. You know, people will be trying to uh, avoid the double stack as well, so uh, fortunately we don't, we shouldn't have that problem. Um, but, mate, I just want to get off to a clean start and bring home a top 10 finish. All right, have a great day. Thank you. Cheers. That's Greg Murphy, Greg Rust and Rihanna Cran down on the grid. The young blacks down there enjoying it also. Now, Neil Crompton is down in the Hino Hub. We've got a brand new Super Sprint format for 2016, so we're in the Hino Hub. Let's tell the story about our race facts for this afternoon. So, we're going to have one... 120 kilometres of racing. It'll be over a journey of 50 laps. Here's the key number. United E85, you're going to consume somewhere in the order of about 105 litres. And remember, the usable tank capacity in these cars is 110 litres. These two numbers are very close. It's influenced by temperature, by lap speed, by traffic, by all kinds of things. And no two laps are linear. They're always different. This is going to have to be managed. We will talk about it. Compulsory pit stop for everybody. Four wheels and tyres. Dunlop soft tyre weekend with no rotation of those wheels and tyres. You've got to pluck them off and put new ones on. Here's the fuel burn. Approximately 2 litres a lap. It'll go out to about 2.1 litres if you're making really good lap speed. And even if you bump this up by 95 to 100 mil, that's going to make you perilously close to requiring fuel. Starting fuel will likely be, for some of the people in the field, 85 or more litres. And I'll explain that in more detail. So, Given the fact that you've got a compulsory pit stop, you're stationary for four or five seconds to rattle those wheels and tyres on, which means you could refuel your car. So you could start with 85 litres, no less, otherwise you're going to have to stand still and waste time to put fuel in the car. So this is critical. You might choose to run more, but why carry more weight and fuel slow the race car down? Look for the early stops in this race. You cannot pit before the leader commences lap number five. Safety car prob is way off the scale here. It's the late 90s since we've had a race that hasn't been affected by the safety car. Great tyre life. You can go one lap down super easy here, 15 or 20 seconds off the lead of the race, and you get buried. Watch for the undercut. We'll talk about that in the commentary because if you are racing somebody closely and you get onto your good new tyres before they do, you can jump out ahead of them. In terms of the strategy, we're going to focus on red here. Remember, you'll start with 80 five or more litres come in as soon as that window opens grab your extra 20 litres of fuel potentially and run to the end or play the gambling game flip the coin start full and try and stretch it out to here either way this is going to be a fascinating race 120 kilometres 50 laps race four of the championship looking forward to it
And playing the gambling game is exactly right, Neil, because lots of these teams, because it's colder, they're using more fuel, and because of the headwind, they're using more fuel. Drama here for Scott McLaughlin. They've got the airbox off the front of the S60 Volvo, looking at whatever that gremlin may be, and that's the worst way to start a race like this. Remember those engine dramas that they had through the course of last year? They've been very, very fast, and their form not quite as good as we expected because that drama at turn fourth, and then there's Scott just preparing himself and all the tension. You can see the tension in his face as he prepares to get himself organised for race four of our championship. Greg Russ on the grid with Fabian Coulthard. Well, for DJR Team Penske, Fabian Coulthard is off grid position 10 here, but you've just looked over your shoulder at uh, fellow Kiwi Scotty McLaughlin in front of you. Do you think there's an issue down that way? Uh, who knows, you know, so we just go about our plan, but you know, hopefully for his sake there isn't. But, uh, yeah, look, you know, we just go about our business. Um, you know, I was qualified 10th, not probably where we want to be, but, you know, it's so close around this place. You know, you don't have to be too far off and uh, you're a little bit further back. But it's um, a longer race than we normally have here at Tassie, so we'll see how we go. I'll get it. Cheers. Uh, Shane Megas, we 50 laps, mate. Uh, you're close, nice and close to the front, but it's going to be tight. I mean, Lounsey's doing a great job, awesome job by Frosty to put it on pole. What are you going to, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, the qualifying as usual here was amazingly close. Tires, but there is a, a question mark on fuel. Yeah, it is. Um, well, I think we'll be right. So, um, but you know, the front guy is always going to push the most air, which effectively uses the most fuel. So, um, first problem was to become that problem to get on pole. But uh, you know, the, the difference is that you can run two guys on the rear tires if you don't put fuel in, and also uh, you know, there's a bit more room there for the guys to work. So, you're not going to go. Thanks. One of the carbon trumpets on top of the engine there, and the but one of the butterflies is actually broken inside the trumpet. So, I'm not sure what their plan is here, but they're putting it back together. Um, it's not going to perform. Mate, you give a bit of an be a little bit surprised about where you ended up at, uh, for today's. Made it rotate really well at the hairpin. Got a reasonable toe at the back straight, like a few, and, and placed it.
there. Real problem down there for Scott McLaughlin. Qualifying in position number 17 for race four this afternoon. There he is, number 22, James Courtney for the Holden Racing Team. He hasn't had a win here, Scafe. He has had five podiums, nine top tens from the last ten races. Plenty of consistency. This is a man who's perfectly qualified to take us on a hot lap of Simmons Plains. Hi everyone, I'm here in uh, the 22 at Tasmania, it's James Courtney. I'm about to take you for a lap of Tassie. So a crazy little track, so much going on in a short period of time. This main straight here's got a bit of a kink in it. We're up to fifth, over the crest here that wants to grab the front right. Then as you turn to the left, it grabs the left. So it's crazy there. Second, as you're getting out of here, car squirming, it's like wrestling a bear in there as you're pulling gears. Have a bit of a breather here. Think about what's coming up. We've got the hairpin, it's the biggest stop in supercars. Here we're washing off 200 kilometers an hour, back to second, back to first, pull it up, turn in. Really, really important here, the drive out. Hard on the gas, pulling through the gears. Having to think about up into turn six, it's quite a kink as you go through here, and then it's a really good passing opportunity. Smashing the brake here, down all the way to third. The car's struggling to pull up, lock the rear slightly there, tip it in back on the gas. This doesn't look like much of a corner, but it's really hard to keep the thing planted and through here at a good lap time. Crazy little lap here. Like I said, it's short, but really exciting. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see how we go on the weekend. He wasn't thrilled about the performance of the car in qualifying, but quick reminder that we're off to Phillip Island next and how's the action that's been generated over the years at one of my favourite racetracks, WD40 Phillip Island Super Sprint, 15 to 17 of April, Ticketech.com.au. It was the scene of the championship win in 2006 for Rick Kelly. The big shunt between Prema and Courtney down at the hairpin. It's a great place to watch V8 supercar racing. Got to stand down there at the bottom of the main straight and watch those cars into one scope. It's one of your favorite tracks. It certainly is. And you arrived there, Neil, at almost 290 kilometers an hour. One of the best racetracks in the world. 500th round of the Australian Touring Car Championship. Let's get back downstairs. Yeah, boys, uh, just spoke to Richard Holloway about uh, Scott McLaughlin. So what they're going to do is they're going to roll away in the warm-up lap. He's going to come into pit lane, start from the pit lane. Uh, so he goes under starters' orders. Then he's going to come around and come back into the pits, and they're going to try and fix that, according to Richard, because the, the butterfly is actually broken. It's jammed inside minutes. that trumpet. Obviously, we're not going to have good performance, and they, they are worried about, obviously, getting off the line cleanly. So not good for these guys, and hopefully they will be able to get that rectified. But um, it looks like a fairly big job to me. Greg Murphy and Rihanna Crean together with Greg Rust likely to have a very busy afternoon the way things are going to unfold down there because there's a compulsory stop for everybody in the field to put on another four wheels and tyres on these cars, maybe squirt some fuel in. There is an issue there that when you don't have to put fuel in, it clears the back of the car, it gives easy passage to those that are on the rattle guns down there. So, Scofie, there's a second either way in that one. So. Uh, I'm fascinated to see who rolls the dice here that I spoke about when I went down to the Hino Hub before to talk about the strategy for the race. Will they stretch it or will they grab some fuel? Well, it's real risk versus reward, isn't it? And remember, this place has, over the years, had big impacts on the championship. And as we can see there, Michael Caruso for Nissan Motor Company leading the championship by 15 points to Jamie yeah. Winkup. And Winkup not happy with his qualifying. This young man, Van Gisbergen, was very fast. He will line up third right behind this great battle between Mark Winterbottom and Craig Lowndes to turn one. And remember what happened here last year with Craig Lowndes and Dave Reynolds in a very similar scenario. We've always seen problems as you arrive over this hill to get the cars turned. And these two guys, Mark Winterbottom, he was the benchmark starter last year. Craig Lowndes is also very good off the start. So I can't wait for the way these guys approach that you walk the cars off the line and then approach that turn one. There's the hump, over the hump and into turn two. And it wasn't a happy ending last year between Lowndes and a green car. Same livery, different bloke. So uh, there'll be a bit of intensity when they get over the top of the hump down there that Mark just spoke about. Craig Lowndes closest to camera. Team Vortex Holden Commodore for Triple Eight Race Engineering alongside him from Pro Drive and the Montlow Racing Team and Rod Nash Racing. It's Mark Winterbottom number one on a wheel spin with dirty cold tyres out there as the boys roar away. Let's check out our starting grid. You can see that Winterbottom and Lowndes off the front. Equal best qualifying at this location for Van Gisbergen and for Holdsworth. Will Davis in a great performance in fifth alongside Rick Kelly. 
lap record holder at this location. 11 wins for Jamie Winkup here, and there's a problem with McLaughlin's car. Hopefully it doesn't hurt too much. Jason Bright's won a couple of times here. Fabian Coulthard's had success here. Mostert in the super cheap car this year. Cam Waters, isn't he a young bloke in a hurry doing a great job? Scotty Pye and Garth Tander are next in the queue, followed by Chris Pitha and Tim Blanchard. Best ever V8 supercar qualifying performance for Pitha in a spare car. He had a shocking incident down in Adelaide at Turn 8, so good to see him bouncing back with a strong performance. Further down the order, our championship leader is Michael Caruso. He's got 15 points up his sleeve. He's going to be a bit under pressure after this race unless he can make lots of ground. Further back to James Moffat. Aaron Russell caught up with him last night. It's the first time that he's ever been down here in a V8 Supercup. First time period. So it's a learning exercise for one of the rookies in the field today. Big lineup of talent. A lot of stories to talk about along the way, including the fact that for Fabian Coulthard, and here he is on screen, it's V8 Supercar race number 300 today. And already our team has detailed the fact that Holden may be on for win number 500 in the championship. We'll keep you updated with that. But a special moment for Fabian. The other guy that could knock off a hallmark this weekend, but you have to pull something of a miracle in this race, given the stats that Aaron Noonan provides for us as well, uh, based on who's done what over the years at this location from various positions on the grid, is if Wink Up wins today and tomorrow, he joins the 100 club as well. This is a great ball ring, this venue. So much history here. The team that operate the venue at Simmons Plains have done some wonderful work since we were last here. Biggest, one of the biggest annual sporting events in Tasmania. We love coming here. We do. As drivers, the drivers love coming here too. I'm just watching the two guys on the front row, Craig Lowndes and Mark Winterbottom, line up. It is going to be a drag race between these two into the first couple of corners. And then behind, Lee Holdsworth's done a great job to be on the second row. And Shane Van Gisbergen, talking to him just before, he's got the excitement about him at the moment watch for him because he will be racing very hard looking to take that 500th win for Holden can't wait car number 33 well, uh, in the pit lane thanks now. to the Gregs Murphy and Rust watch for action down at turn two for more action at turn four for more on the first lap going into turn number six we're standing by for the start the tire power Tasmania Green super flag. sprint Green flag. the battle for the championship resumes in Tasmania Three races so far, three winners. The possibility of another being added to the list today. Nice start for both of them on the front row. A tiny edge for Winterbottom as they go side by side to two. Holdsworth on the outside on the dirty line, lost a bit of ground. Van Gisberg at a good start. He's threatening his teammate Lowndes. They rub up very close to the fence at three. It's Winterbottom by a car length. Lounge drops to second, they all cover to the inside. Somebody will go the bold outside move. Wink up is one of them. He runs the high line. Congestion in the mid pack. Pressure between the Triple Eight teammates, Lounge and Van Gisbergen, and a clean start for Frosty. The great start that was, mate, because I was really blown away by the lack of wheel spin that Frosty was able to get and check the pressure on. They've all arrived at the end of turn six and now that's a move for Winkup. He bumps Holdsworth. That's fast. That's almost 165 kilometres an hour. Pushes him wide and he got him. There was trouble also between Bright and Coulthard. It's on here with Rick Kelly, Lee Holdsworth, Jamie Winkup. It's an intense bull ring. They run the cars up against the rivers on the fence and turn three on cold tyres. Pressure. Lowndes is applying it to the back of Winterbottom. In the traffic, the brake tips will get as high as 850 degrees. They're going to have to manage brakes. They're going to have to manage tyres. And they've got to be very mindful of traffic around here. It's easy to close down on someone and bump and grind. The damage on the front of Garth Tanner's car. A lot of damage to the left-hand front corner. I was about to say they all got through unscathed. There's also damage on the back of Cam Waters' Falcon. Everyone's drafting. They're all down the inside. I think he's going to get there, Scott Pye. He does. He pushes Garth Tander wide. And whether Slade can get back up the inside, not quite. A lot of pressure on Frosty now at the front because Craig Lowndes, remember, it was vintage form by Lowndes last year. Two out of three wins. Win Cup is going berserk out there at the moment. P5, fastest lap of the race, 52-3. He's in a bit of clear air, and he's ranging up onto the back of Will Davison to turn this into a five-way battle for the lead. Look at the Triple Eight teammates. Van Gisbergen poked the nose of the Holden underneath Lowndes to try and do something about him. 
pressure motor racing. It's winner bottom by 0.2 of a second from Lowndes, from Van Gisbergen, from Davison, Wind Cup, Kelly Holdsworth, Coulthard, Bright, and Cam Waters is 10. The pros and cons of this now in terms of strategy means that for Mark Winterbottom, he's pushing into the air. It's a headwind at the end of the main straight. He'll be using the most amount of fuel. But conversely, the two guys behind, Lowndes and Van Gisbergen, they'll be using the most amount of brake wear and temperature because it's very, very hard on brakes here. One of the hardest in the country. Scott McLaughlin in the pit still. Next lap. The window opens for the opportunity to take the compulsory stop. It'll depend on how they feel they're running and whether they're being affected by traffic. Down the inside goes Van Gisbergen. He may have a rub here with Louds. It's on between the teammates. They do touch. And Louds is up on the outside. Van Gisbergen's trying to sneak down the inside. He wants the inside line for the braking at turn six. Nothing between these two at 265 kilometres an hour. Van Gisbergen prevails. P2. Nice pass, very nicely executed in wind cup, using clear air. He's on for the undercut. He'll get on the other set of tyres and try and make it work for him. These front guys at the moment are being traffic affected. Davison's fast, he's P4 at the moment. So wind cup and Courtney have come in. Strategic play by James Courtney, given he qualified so poorly. And the teammates battling have just let the Mark Winterbottom gap. It's eased out to almost one second, 0.79. And now Lowndes right up in behind again. Here's the stop for Wink Up. There's the stop for Courtney. Nice stop. And that was very, very willing between the teammates. Nice pass down the inside. A little bump on the exit of turn four. Held his margin on the way through turn five at almost 270 kilometres an hour and then got down the inside cleanly to finally take that position two from Craig Lowndes. And now he's on the hunt for the series champion. He just got that turn then. Frosty clobbered the curb at turn two. Winterbottom bounced the Falcon all the way to the edge of the road on the exit of two then. I love those speed cam shots in both directions. It's 0.7 of a second now, Winterbottom over Van Gisbergen. Lowndes running the high line again in the hairpin. Davison very close to him. Rick Kelly in the Nissan Alderman. He's got some fresh air to Lee Holdsworth. Coulthard's up to seventh. His old teammate Jason Bright and Fabian were getting stuck into it on the first lap. Behind them, Cam Waters, then Scott Pye's in the 10. Courtney and Winkup have come in early. Davison's racing. He's got real, real pace. He's taken ground off Craig Lowndes. Lowndes in. So he can't afford to be too exposed to the Jamie Winkup scenario because Winkup's got clear air. He will be doing the best lap times he can possibly do. In fact, he's equaled the fastest time now. A 51.93 with a 51.93 from Mark Winterbottom. A 51.94 for Shane Van Gisbergen. So there's one hundredth of a second between Winterbottom, Van Gisbergen and Winkup in terms of pace. Fuel, little squirt of it, like we talked about in the Hino Hub, just as an insurance policy, because they're stationary dealing with the tyres rattling on. He's just going to get out. This is going to be very interesting. Look at Wink Cup approaches at 210 kilometres an hour, slows at the 90k and gets through. So Wink Cup has made ground. That is a very clever piece of strategy by David Couchy and the guys from from Jamie Winkup's crew because he's been able to make ground. So he's got to keep on pressing on now. As I said, 51.93 is the fastest lap of the race, winner bottom. Winkup has done the same lap time. Boys, just an observation from that stop by Craig Lowndes. The synchronicity didn't seem as fast as it did for Jamie Winkup. That's a little thing. Red Bull were rehearsing constantly on Thursday, those pit stops. Maybe the front tyres going on a little slower than the rears. That could make just that little difference in the Lowndes stop versus Winkup. And the other thing, thanks Greg Russ, that makes a difference in the total timing terms of that stop for Craig Lowndes was the big understeer pushing so hard on the cold tyre on the pit lane exit. That definitely cost him. He knew he was racing Jamie Winkup there, so he's fared poorly in that exercise. Race leader is in. Mark Winterbottom had a margin of one second. So with all the Triple Eight related flurry behind him, he built some credit in the bank. That'll be handy, that one second buffer. His teammate, Chaz Mostert, effectively teammate, Rod Nash Racing entry, is also in the lane, car number 55. 
And if I was Triple Eight now, I'd be bringing Van Gisbergen in on the next lap because you can't expose him to different strategy when you're racing Mark Winterbottom for the lead here. Rusty? Scapey, the observation on Chas Mostert's car is they are not taking fuel by the looks of it on the Mostert car. That's the first one I've seen do that, and it looked like a faster stop than Frosty's. Yeah, he definitely there, gained ground, didn't he? There's a tiny little gain by not having the back of the car crowded. Oh, very oh. close on the exit, so close that Winterbottom actually ended up in the weeds. He had to come out of the throttle. That second buffer that he had, it just spent it right there. Absolutely. In one manoeuvre, that was what, more than a second, I reckon, in the end. It's yeah. almost 100 metres. But check this out. The real leader is Winkup. That early Three stop, the undercut of everybody, is the key to this now. What's going to happen with Van Gisbergen is the story of the race. And the killer pace. So early on... Wink up was mega fast. Fastest lap of the race, Craig Lowndes, is where focused here on Van Gisbergen. I think they did do fuel. They'd actually uncoupled by the time we saw the uh, image there, but it is confirmed they did put fuel in 97. Here we go. Look how close this here we is go. going to be between 88. Van Gisbergen runs wide, and Winkup has pulled one out of the hat. And he's gone straight down the inside and grabbed both his teammates in the first 10 laps of the race. And a drama there because Rick Kelly, great manoeuvre. He was right on the cusp with Craig Lowndes. Down the end, outside comes Fabian Coulthard. There's no road there. We've seen lots of drama over the years. Rick Kelly gets it turned. Good manoeuvre, but Lowndes and Kelly, they were rubbing as they come out of turn three. Fastest lap of the race now is Craig Lowndes. 51.84. Wow. Will Davison's the leader. He's got 2.9 seconds over Lee Holdsworth. Garth Tander's just leaving the lane, guys. The damage to the front, you can uh, you can see there. I just want to recap something you talked about in the Hino Hub prior to this race. Jamie Wincup pitting nice and early, and James Courtney was the other one, gave him nice, clear air. It gave him that crucial track position. How much has that helped him so far in this race? Yeah, the undercut was one of the focus areas that I talked about. Clear air, good tyres, away he went. Check this out, winter bottom. Had to come out of the throttle, steer down to the right to avoid Craig Lowndes and that had a big impact on the margin. Here it is from the other angle on the inside of the corner. Davison, Holdsworth and Heimgartner have come in. That reveals Jason Bright as the leader of the race. He's got 1.7 seconds over Cam Waters. Here's the replay now of Van Gisbergen departing. It was a carbon copy of what happened to Craig Lowndes. Cold tyres, couldn't get a turn. Here's Will Davison's stop. Good to go, good to go. Let's see whether there was fuel there for that one. We're just doing the rough numbers. There's a disparity between the Mark Winterbottom stop and the Jamie Winkup stop of about six seconds. So oh, look at this between Lowndes and Davison. Nothing in it here. Side by side, they actually made contact. Very light contact through three. Lowndes on the warm tyres was able to round him up, but there was nothing in that as they went past the old pit lane exit area. The mystery of the race, although we've seen the contact and Davison very deep oh. and almost off the road, there for Winterbottom. Now, he may have been down the outside. He may not have had much road there. So, one of the real mysteries is not just the contact between Mark Winterbottom and Craig Lowndes, it's the difference in the pit stop time in total between his stop, Mark Winterbottom, and Jamie Winkup. Six seconds. Here's Lowndes. Check this out. This is a great rear on shot. Cars are sliding, battling for grip. The two effective teammates, because they're in the same garage, they're bumping each other. Look at that. The super slow-mo replay, because that tyre hasn't come up to pressure, you could see the exposed rim on the left rear of Will Davison's car. And off the road down here, Andre Heimgartner, car number three at turn two. Very easily done. So Lowndes has further moved that marker for the fastest lap. So the intensity at the beginning of it was pretty much as predicted. Bright's the leader for Pi, Slade, Reynolds, Pitha. Blanchard, Caruso, James Moffat and Todd Kelly have come in. And McLaughlin has departed the garage and is back out there. What a crushing blow for them at Wilson Security, Gary Rogers Motorsport. What a frustration. So things have settled down a little bit because those guys, well, those guys that have made the stop, the effective leader is Jamie Winkup from Van Gisbergen and Lowndes. But I still can't work out why Mark Winterbottom has lost so much track position. It's just, the six seconds is massive. 
There's a bit of miracle work in there from Win Cup, though. The, the way he signed through the pack in the opening lap, and he immediately established the quickest lap, and then he just took every opportunity, and then used that clear air to perfection. Undercut, and away he's gone. So Jason Bright leads from Pye, Slade, Reynolds, Blanchard, Wood, Russell, Pitha, Caruso's just coming to the pits. So has Chris Pitha. There's a bit of a vibration. If you have a look at the front air dam on Jason Bright's car, it's moving up and down. It's buffering like we saw yesterday with Lee Holdsworth. It may be a bit of damage from early contact. It's very willing when the concertina effect happens at turn four. There's always lots of front to tail contact, Murph. Yeah, I'll just uh, interrupt Tim Edwards briefly, try and get to the bottom of what's happened to Mark Winterbottom, the loss in time. We're all just sort of a bit surprised that he's dropped back to where he is. Was there a problem in that pit stop? Did you see anything there? He overshot the box by a metre. <laughs> so it's pretty simple, really. So it's so, very good. It's, yeah, I mean, it, you've only got to lose a second and a half or so in a pit stop, and unfortunately just skid it through a little bit long, and by the time the guys will, you know, react, move that position, you know, it, a metre mightn't sound a lot, but, you know, you've got to be pretty accurate when you stop these cars, and it just sort of puts everyone off their game. You know, the spike guy's not in the right position, but, um, and it's all right. Look, I mean, he's got good car speed, and there's a long way to go, so I think everyone stopped pretty early on their tyres, so... I know it's low deck here, but I still think you know, it's, it's, um, it'll still pan out a little bit different towards the end of the race. Not an easy game. No, mate. Added to the fact that not only did he overshoot, thanks for the update, Greg Murphy and Tim Edwards, but he had that awkward moment coming out of the pit lane, followed by, a, there it is, followed by another awkward moment up at the hairpin. So instead of being the guy that was in front of the gaggle of Triple Eight cars, he's actually now parked up behind Will Davis and Rick Kelly and Fabian Coulthard together with the block of Triple Eight cars. That's a very big loss. That's, that's exactly right. So the, the quantum of all that, if you combine all those ones and say, where is he? The reality of that number, Wink Cup now battling with his teammate Ben Gisbergen. It's Ben Gisbergen has a look down the inside. Remember, a couple of years ago, we had the drama down in exactly the same spot with Wink Cup down the inside of Craig Lowndes, the two championship protagonists, and Wink Cup pushed Lowndes off the road there. We will not want to see that again. Roland Dane will be sweating up in that garage at the moment because there's nothing in it. Check this out, there is nothing in it. Great images, Van Gisbergen all over the back of Lowndes, looks down the inside of the hairpin. Uh, all over Wind Cup, I should say. And down the inside goes Shane Van Gisbergen. So that was nice and easy for him there. Easier than I would have thought. This is going to be interesting when they get to the braking area at six. Hold your breath. Absolutely on the limit, these guys. So that's effectively the lead of the race. Shane Van Gisbergen sneaking up on Jamie Winkup. <laughs> These guys need to, they need to do your trick. Breathe, breathe. So, uh, very intense. We saw a big battle at this Australian Grand Prix between all three of the Triple Eight teammates. And it's a resumption of play in that battle. And this has been a bit of a bogey circuit for Shane Van Gisbergen. He's not had the form or consistency here or in Perth. These are two tracks that he hasn't been good enough. And a little run wide. And Van Giersbergen gets it done cleanly. Check how close he was down here. This is 245 kilometers an hour. Right behind. Wing Cup didn't block. He just braked it as deep as he could. He ran a little high. He had the two wheels across the white line like his teammate Lowndes did earlier in the day. So that was nice and easy for Shane. They were both maxed out. And as Tim Edwards observed a few moments ago, it's a long way. A long way to now run these tyres all the way to the end, despite the fact that we're saying the tyres get pretty well looked after here. We'll see how this plays in the end game. Hey, Mark Dutton, uh, no matter how many times you see your teammates or your, your, both your cars racing like that, it's a little bit nerve-wracking. Yeah, extremely nerve-wracking, mate. But, uh, hey, they true gentlemen and, and professionals, mate. Uh, they couldn't have done that better. No, they couldn't. Have, but it didn't look like... Jamie was wanting to give it away. Just like he struggling a fraction under brakes there, ran a bit wide, and, and SVG took uh, took the opportunity. Yeah, I think uh, J Jamie saw they didn't quite have the pace at the moment of, of SVG, so uh, did the sensible thing. No use blocking and, and burning up your ears and then uh, being exposed to everyone from behind. A great job by Jamie, you guys, to do the, the strategy the way you did, get that undercut and find himself out the front, though, after starting on grid seven.
Yeah, he had excellent pace at the start of the race, so a little bit disappointed it's dropped off a bit now. But uh, no, excellent start by Jamie, good call by Couchy, so, uh, and, uh, and good call by Ground as well. So, so far, so good. Good on you. Thank you. Just down at uh, Gary Rogers Volvo with Richard Holway, engineer for car 33 for Scotty McLaughlin. Frustrating start. Is it sorted? How is it now? No, no, we, we, he's basically got seven butterflies, so it's a uh, broken butterfly. And he's just circulating, so we'll just finish the race. And it's actually got reasonable pace. When it's wide open throttle, it's like normal, but every all the other time it's a bit fluffy. So tomorrow's another day, mate. Hard luck. Absolutely. Cheers, mate. So if we were able to peer through the bonnet and understand what it looks like at the top of the engine beneath the air intake and the plenum there's the eight trumpets and inside there's a little butterfly which is connected to your throttle pedal and as you push the throttle pedal the butterfly opens allowing more air to be dragged in which is mixed with the fuel so one of those is broken which effectively means that it's getting a full gulp of air and uh, I mean, it ruins everything runs on won't have the proper power it's basically it's a disaster it is a disaster and Again, some of those little engine gremlins having a big effect on Scott McLaughlin. Now, Will Davison, fastest lap of the race now with a 51.74, so he's showing really good pace. So to explain that gap, we said it was six and a half seconds. This is Scott Pye, who is about to get a little bump from James Courtney, who's about to get a big bump from James Courtney. That was the second one, I think. That's exactly right, and that's a pretty fast section of road. So the crisscross for Courtney comes back to the inside, a little bump, and then a bigger bump. And he's lucky to get away with that one, Scott Pye, because when you get out there in the grey, out there in the marbles, no grip out there. And Lowndes has made a lot of ground on so Winkup. They're tying another triple eight knot again here. All three of those cars are bundled up. Slade's the leader of the race for Team Freightliner. There's his teammate, Jason Bright. We're on board here with Craig Lowndes. So Lowndes is behind, Winkup is behind Van Gisbergen. And this is effectively first, second and third. For those that haven't stopped, it's Slade, Blanchard and Russell. Van Gisbergen is four. So the six and a half seconds that we made reference of before that between the great stop for Wing Cup versus the poor stop by Mark Winterbottom, it's about four and a half seconds on track now. So he's actually made a little bit of that back. And what Tim Edwards said before was it's a long race. They all stopped early. And we've just got to see now how Mark Winterbottom, in terms of car pace and tyre degradation, how that car shapes up in the closing stages. Well, John O'Webb just uh, sort of said to me, you know, this driver, Will Davis, is doing a great job there, sitting in fourth, watching the three in front, just waiting for something to go wrong, and, you know, do the old uh, Stephen Bradbury. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, look, it's been a really good weekend for us so far. From P1, Will's been happy, but car's been good. Yeah, we're uh, in a good spot at the moment, just watching see what the other three do. It's still a long way to go. Like, uh, yeah, the guys stopped a lot earlier, and we thought they would. It's a long run to the end, but yeah, we had to cover the leader, so we did you know, follow the leader, and we did what we did, and we'll, uh, we'll see where we're at the end. So Will's pushing on, staying with that crowd, looking after tyres. The last ten's uh, going to be fun. It is going to be fun. He's uh, very quick at the moment. Good luck, mate. Thank you. Jonathan Webb stepped up into the shoes, vacated by Steve Hallam recently, who's been heading that team in the last little while. And uh, Steve's heading back to the US. He's had a great career in international motorsport. It's a loss for the V8 supercar community, but they're doing a great job. Interesting that Grant McPherson said to me in Adelaide that do not discount Will Davison. He said if he gets into a car that gives him the right feel, and they worked together when it was called Ford Performance Racing, he said he'll be well and truly in the game. So the interesting observation for me here, Scapey, is that's a triple eight car, triple eight car, triple eight car, triple eight car, four of them. And they've all got, got, got absolutely, it's a shocker. <laughs> it's T8 times four, that would be an easier way to say it. But they are very closely matched despite different drivers, different setups and a different approach from each one of those garages. Is that T32 or what is that? Yeah. How does that work out? It's but fine. it is a great drive. and. The great thing about this now, this will give Will genuine confidence because he didn't start the year out as well as he would have liked. He was saying he needed to adapt his driving style. He now has got, I think, the rapport in terms of what they like from it. It's also about the way Will applies himself to the technique. And what he does here is he brakes the car very well. He's always been very good under brakes, especially in the first phase of the braking area, and Will Davison, currently fastest car, effectively falls. And there's nothing in it when you look at those laps. There are so many drivers out there at the moment that are absolutely driving qualifying laps, and you're seeing 
it reflected in tiny little errors here and there because they've got these things teetering on the brink. There's nothing in it. So Slade's the leader from Tim Blanchard. Simon McNamara on the right from Holden Motorsport. Roland Dane, team principal for Triple Eight Race Engineering in the Red Bull bunker. And there's his troops. Lowndes with the right rear. Stressing that car off the edge of the road. Will Davis will be getting showered with rocks. It's interesting when you look at the cars here, they turn up like they're presented for a motor show, glossy and beautiful. After they've done a couple of practice sessions and several races, they look like they've been to the sandblaster because there's so many rocks get thrown at the cars. You look at the front bumpers and the, and the snout of the bonnet and it's absolutely torn apart. And what also happens is, check this out, so there's Ben Gisberg and right on the edge of the road. There's Wink Up slightly wider and Lounge slightly wider. And what happens when you're sliding the car all together like that, as the first guy gets slightly wide, then the next guy just gets a little wider and a little wider. And Lounge couldn't have picked up the edge of the road. It's so easy to have a, a little mistake and sometimes very easy to go on that left-hand fence or the right one. A couple of other quick observations before we settle back and enjoy this ride. Rick Kelly's shadowing this lead group as well. He's got pace that replicates the leaders. The other thing that I've noted looking at our data here, there's only one driver that, according to us, didn't take fuel and that was Mostert. So everybody else bought the insurance policy, only one did. Let's enjoy the ride. that all afternoon. Craig Lowndes hard at work in the Team Vortex Holden Commodore. And you made the observation, Mark, that at the end of the back straight we were just silently enjoying that. He was in the limiter. That's 265 kilometres an hour, even with a pretty decent headwind out there. Probably getting a little benefit from the draft preceding yeah, car. That's right. There'd be a little bit of a toe, a little bit of a slipstream from the car in front. But it looks like still Will Davison taking more ground off Craig. Looks like he's a little bit better ballast and he's not using as much exit road. So just check the line. Next time we'll have a look. When you come off turn two, he doesn't get as wide as Lowndes, which takes the load off the car when you change direction to turn three. So I think the rear tyre, in terms of degradation, is probably a little bit better off for the wheel spin. Now, good job, Will Davison modulated the wheel spin very nicely there. So easy to burst into wheel spin coming out of there in first gear. See the wiper? It's lifting off the screen. So he is getting turbulent air from the preceding car, Craig Lowndes, as in comes Tim Slade, Team Freightliner entry, out of what was the lead. Interesting to look at how low Will sits in the car. And he's very particular about the seat insert and his comfort in the car. He uses the scape insert. I talked about that when we were in Adelaide. Quite a number of the drivers out there are still using your old moulding from way back in the old Holden racing team days with those race tech seats. But he sits very low and he had a little bit of lower back and hip trouble there for a while. And as he's moved around from team to team, it's something he's had to very carefully manage. He actually was quite injured there several years ago. But he'll be really inspired by this run that he's having at the moment because that's Craig Lowndes in the foreground. Watch this wiper as he starts to build speed. 240, 250, coming up now to 260. Lucky it's not raining, he's waving to the crowd. Yeah, if that was wet, that thing wouldn't work at all. So look at the line. So let's just check this out. So you can see that a little bit of oversteer. These are great shots because the body language of the car, you can really see. If you're Will Davison right now, you know exactly what Craig Lowndes' rear tyre life is like. Check this out. So off turn two. Now he doesn't go as wide. So see how the line that Lowndes uses is more a, tr a traditional line. He's got a lot more drag on the right before he has to make the change of direction to the 
turn three exit. That's about 175k. So that will hurt the tyre more than the line that Will Davison's using. Same there, much straighter. He made ground on Craig Lowndes. Notice the top of the dash. The triple eight cars and Will's car okay, have all got like this. It's like a velour or a felt. So Shane Van Gisbergen turned up and he said, oh, I don't like how shiny the top of the dash is. Can you fix it? So they did. And then every other bloke in those garages, which are side by side, immediately said, I want that too. <laughs> Look at this down the inside comes Jason Bright. It's on here. Holdsworth is the other car with Ga Garth Tander up on the outside. You can't work out what happened to Jason Bright in the braking area then. I thought he was definitely down the inside. So did I. I dropped. That was and very strange because I thought when they arrived, here we go, so there's a little bit of contact, a little bump, so he's actually redressed. Yeah, okay. So they, they've actually had a previous history doing the same thing. These guys bumped each other halfway down the straight last year. So when you do that, he just ran into him. So you can see Garth then gets straightened up. There's a little bit of hand gesturing and drama going between the two of them. Look at the damage on the left-hand front. And then what happens, when they get down the end, Jason has just chosen to break a little early and let Garth back by. Winterbottom just moved up one position on Coulthard, by the way, so he's gone up into seventh. Tim Blanchard's still the leader. He's got 16 seconds. Look at all this. There's Winterbottom. That's Coulthard. In behind there is Mostert as well. Together with uh, Cam Waters. Several cars out there have got pretty big bites out of various corners of the bodywork as well, including the monster car, which has been monstered. Well, this, how's this? Because those four Falcons, they're playing for keeps at the moment. That was Mostert just in behind Cam Waters there. So Winterbottom leading this group. This is really effectively for 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th. Mostert down the inside of Coulthard now. Has to run the narrow line. Can't get on the throttle as early. He's got to stay there can't maintain the overlap the trick to that is making sure that when you exit the corner you've got some overlap when you do that then you can run around the outside here at turn five you're on the inside for turn six it's a crucial maneuver in the exit strategy and making that pass blanchard has pitted that leaves van gisbergen now is the true leader of the race he's got just on one second over jamie Wincup from craig lowndes then will davison Rick Kelly in the Nissan, and then it's that cluster of Fords, Winterbottom, Waters, Coulthard, Mostert, then Tander is 10. Ryan, Ryan Story just watching on Fabian Coulthard getting monstered by a pack of Pro Drive Falcons. You know, he was doing a great job. You guys did an awesome job to put him uh, up the, uh, a few spots up and uh, with the strategy. And now he just seems to be struggling that little bit, though, with his pace. Yeah, he is. We're struggling to pull a car up at the moment, which is a bit of a shame, but we're the meat and the Pro Drive sandwich at the moment. Uh, we'll continue to, to press on and, and try and bring the thing home, but uh, yeah, we're struggling a bit. We've got a bit to, bit to do, but uh, at least we got him out in the right spot. The pit stops are a bit better than what we did in Adelaide, so the boys have done a good job there. Well done. Thanks, Greg. Cheers. That's for position. Will Davison moves up to third place in car number 19 for Daryl Lee Sticks at Techno Autosport. So Lowndes perhaps just starting to hurt for tyre balance and sliding through turn two there. There would be a little bit of aero disturbance that close as well, but a low speed corner. So Will Davison speedy. Now, Rick Kelly's not terribly far behind Craig Lowndes here as well. Let's keep an eye on that margin. Meantime, Van Gisbergen's actually opened up another couple of tents over Jamie Wincup. Here's the gap, so check this out. Winterbottom, followed then by his teammate Cam Waters. Nothing in it between those guys. And then a couple of car lengths back to Chaz Mostert. And then Fabian Coulthard, Garth Tander with Jason Bright still behind him. And the young 21-year-old Cam Waters. Oh, another bump. These guys, seriously. I reckon we've seen more contact with Tanda and Bright over the years in the straight here than any other two guys. And finally, Bright gets down the inside. <laughs> that is wild. You're doing 260 kilometres an hour in that zone, and you're playing dodge and cars. Holdsworth in behind. He's had the best seat in the house to see all that aggro unfolding. Have another look. Holdsworth touched the back of Tander there. So here's the replay of what happened up at turn six. Tander rattling away on the back of Coulthard. Bright rattling away on the back of Tander. <laughs> it's all going on out there. And when you're on the high line there through five, it's actually, depending on tyre condition, the wind and all the rest of it, yeah, there was actually a fair bit of biff there, wasn't there? Um, it's not an easy flat sometimes no. because the car starts to walk across the road and slide on the dirt. 
And this is the replay down at the inside of turn two. And when Craig Lowndes came off this corner, the car was sliding substantially in second gear. And still it goes on. Coulthard chewing away at the back of Jason Bright's Holden Commodore. Garth Tander, the watching brief, and Lee Holdsworth. And then in behind them is actually James Courtney, a couple of car links back, and he's got his hands full with Tim Slade right behind him, who actually had quite fresh tyres because Tim's only just stopped recently, so he'll be a hard man to stop. He'll just have tyre grip on his side. And that was the battle for nights. If you don't think the boys play for keeps, that's a great example. And they're still bumping each other. And it's very easy with a concertina effect. That's Slade, and he'll get this done. As Neil said, on the fresher tyre, much better exit drive. Now, what he's got to do is stay there. And what Neil was just talking about was the stability of the car. Courtney played the gamesmanship. He moved him over. And when he did that, Tim Slade, they're actually good mates, these guys. He stayed in that position. Well done, Tim Slade. He wasn't... There was no... <laughs> it was a gamesmanship. But that was a really nice move. He was able to stay in that position, got around there and executed that pass very nicely. This has been a really good battle. Young Cam Waters, only 21 years of age. Previous DVS champion, the development series, right behind his teammate. In fact, he's holding, at the moment, Winterbottom's holding him up. And previous experience here, it quotes the Formula Ford, very different to the thing he's in out there at the moment. And he's attacking his teammate and the man that started from the pole position, the reigning champion, and he's showing more speed at the moment. Meantime, it's one and a half seconds now, Van Gisbergen over Wind Cup. He's on target at the moment, Shane Van Gisbergen, for his best ever result here. You said earlier, Mark, if you look at him statistically, he's had a couple of podiums, a bunch of top tens here, but he's never won a race in Tasmania, Shane Van Gisbergen. So you can tell by the way in which Waters is positioning the car at the moment that he's just looking for an opportunity, but it demonstrates just how hard it is. Even if you've got a tenth or two in performance, it's not an easy beat to just round up the guy in front. And one of the tricks is this little kick. So what you do is you don't actually move the car. It doesn't look like you're blocking, but if you run the car right against the guardrail the whole way down, and then you move it out to the outside braking area, the guy behind doesn't get down the inside. It's actually a real, it's an art here. And there's Slade, who's making real ground. And who's about to round up Fabian Coulthard, who previously drove the Freightliner Racing Holt Commodore. This is a new car of Slade's, by the way. So the young tyres on Tim Slade's car are working pretty well to full effect at the moment. Interesting watching Waters depart off the hairpin because he short shifted out of first. How's all the bump and grind going on here? Courtney Coulthard. Coulthard was on the radio a minute ago saying, I, I can't turn down at the hairpin. I have to run the high line. It's making me vulnerable. That car's not to their satisfaction. Strategically, they played a Friday game, very different to many others in the paddock yesterday. They spent a long time on the hard tyre. I wonder whether that's hurting now. Here we go. Once again, watch for the short shift. He doesn't run it out to 7.5 in first gear. He grabs second early. He's protecting the rear tyre life, Cam Waters. Sometimes it's better to do a little clutch change there just to modulate the wheel spin on the way out of turn four. It's so easy to have wheel spin and turn. When you're in that turn, you're trying to get the wheel and the straight line at section of that track straightened up as quickly as possible, and you're trying to minimise the wheel spin. Right, got Mostert. That's for position. He's now in eighth. Mostert back to ninth, then Tander. Slade is now 11th, and Slade's got pace in the Freightliner car. So this is the line. So watch this. But what he does is from that inside there, he just moves it over. It doesn't look like he's blocking. You don't... The gamesmanship of this is that you don't actually hold the inside line, but the guy can't get down the inside because you've held the inside up until the breaking point. So well-driven Mark Winterbottom. Stewards and everybody won't be blowing about him blocking at all, but the reality is he's actually holding his teammate up. Here we go. Once again, more pace being shown here by Slade. So the strategy that Brad Jones Racing have played with this car has worked well. Left him out long. It's a shorter stint on this tyre set and everybody else is vulnerable because they pitted early. So Slade came in much later than everybody else. He's siding through the field at the moment. He's up into 10th position. There they are inside the bunker. So Ben Gisbergen leads from Wink Cup, Davison, Lowndes, Rick Kelly. That's the battle we're looking at there now. That's for fourth position. Mark Winterbottom, Waters, we've seen that battle. That's the battle between the teammates. 
Bright has made great speed. Most at Slade, who's coming through the field, just got Tander. So that's your top ten. Greg Rust. We've had the team manager at Nissan Scott Sinclair on hold for a good few laps now, but that's OK. We've been mesmerised by how good the racing has been here. We know that he's in fifth place, or he's challenging these guys potentially. What's he like tyre-wise, and with less than 10 to go, is he a shot at a podium? Ah, uh, yeah, I think that's probably gone now. Will's, uh, Will's pulled away there. We've pulled in Lance, you know. To, to be honest, to be the uh, best of the rest behind those four Triple Eight cars is pretty good for us today. And uh, the other three of our guys have probably suffered from qualifying, but... Um, yeah, it's a, it's a cracking race. I've been mesmerised by the TV. I'm meant to be watching the data and everything, but I've been watching the race. It's tough for the championship leader, Michael Caruso, coming in, but good result for Rick. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, mate. Thanks. That's a great comment from Scott Sinclair. I'm supposed to be watching the data. Yeah. I'm watching the race. I think everybody's <laughs> watching the race, so keep an eye out on Slade once again. He's continuing to march forward at the moment. There's only four seconds covering the top four cars, by the way. We've still got, well, you just heard it, eight to go. There's a lot of work to do on these tyres yet. Great battle going on between Mark Winterbottom and Cam Waters. These fellas are battling for sixth and seventh. Meantime, Van Gisberg and Winkup, Davison and Lowndes and Rick Kelly are ahead of them. you got Bright in eighth place at the moment. Slade's blazing along in that Freightliner car. Slade's tyres, remember, 20, 25 laps, depending on who you compare him to, younger than those he's racing. This is Caruso. Oh, big lock up here. Big lock up for James Moffat, and uh, that's with his former teammate Michael Caruso. And they are good mates. That's being tested out there at the moment down at turn two. He's right, right on the back now of Cam Waters, so he probably lost a lot of time also in that battle that he had going with Garth Panda. But he's racing as well at the moment, Jason Bright. He stopped on lap 21. So, uh, again, younger tyres on that car is proving to be a value for them. So, in on 21 for Bright, in on 29 for Slade. They're in the game, these fellas. And 0.4 on the previous lap. So, look at the speed that Bright's got on fresher tyres. And you can see there in the body language, no sliding from the back of the BOC Commodore. And look at the game that Davison now has on Wink Up. He's old, mate. And it's been a few years since we've seen him trading punches with Jamie and this is good to see isn't there some great battle packs here because Waters needs to park the car in the right spot so that Bright doesn't get him now Bright's need to run he'll run the outside and turn back down oh, great, great move. move he's got it great move very care oh but he's got nowhere to go oh. how's the exit pace oh. the extra traction that bright has got was massive the problem is there was a falcon right the way now he's got cam coming back on the inside they're side by side at 265 kilometers an hour there's nowhere to go on the outside so bright tucks down great motor racing crisscross up the inside and bright gets it done in the end what an exchange between those drivers Meantime, Bright to seventh, and Slade is closing on Mostert. Fantastic driving, Jason Bright. That was what was called the bump draft, because he had nowhere to go, and he actually pushed Mark Winterbottom forward. Now, check this out. Rick Kelly, around the outside, does the crisscross. Oh, yeah. Can he get it done? Because he's just got to stay there. Yes, he can. See the fish tailing. So Rick's turned it down tight. He's done the crisscross. He's flattened it and snaked out the other side. He's trying to hold ground to be on the inside for the left-hander at six. This is a big move by Kelly in the singlet. Nissan, he's down the inside of Lowndes, and he gets the payday. Well, well done. That was a great move, and well done at turn six because he didn't turn in too fast. One of the traps there is if you run it in on the inside line too fast, then Lowndes does a crisscross and takes it back off you at turn seven. So very oh, clever. Someone's got a broken, go, header. broken header on uh, Craig Lowndes' car there. So this is on board with Will Davison, up behind his mate. The battle for position two. And he's had really good pace in this car today. If he got clear of Craig Lowndes earlier, Will Davison would be a real threat to win this. So now we go back to Bright, who's... He's got him! Got him! He's got him! Right it, straight on the inside. it was an absolute gimme. So he just snuck down the inside. They're former teammates of yesteryear. Bright goes down the inside of Winterbottom, takes position number six. He's flying through the field at the moment, Jason Bright. And meantime, Slade did get Mostert. He's up into ninth position in the Freightliner entry. One second margin, Van Gisbergen over Wincup. Still a question mark over the battle for second and third between Wincup and Davison. 
awesome racing from Rick Kelly in fourth place. We think it might be a broken header on Craig Lowndes' car. Ryder in sixth position is going absolutely berserk out there at the moment with lap speed on a younger tyre and using it to great effect. There are great storylines up and down the top ten. Certainly is. Van Gisbergen looks like he's going to hold on for what could be. I'm going to put the mocker on him too early. Holden's 500th win in the championship, Touring Cup Championship history. As you can see there, Wink Cup still prevailing over his mate Will Davison. This is still the battle with the four teammates. It looks like Cam Waters is going to get this done this time. 265k again down the inside, but check Slade because he'll fire down the inside. He's got real pace. Cam was way out in the dirty stuff there to get that done as well. He had to go the long way around and it's dicey out there. Meantime, the battle for second continues. The flames are licking at the rear bumper of Jamie Wincup. Is there going to be the crisscross? Start up high, turn down low. Will's looking for square drive in first gear off the corner. Jamie wags the tail on the concrete. 1.2 seconds, the gap between Van Gisbergen and Wincup. Big pressure on Jamie now. How vigorous is the defence? Coming into turn six, he runs it slightly narrow and it's a bit unstable under brakes. Have a go at Will down the inside. What a great race. 120 k's, super sprint racing, V8 supercar style on the Dunlop soft tyre. It's provided a treat this afternoon. And look at this. They are latched, nose to tail. Win Cup and Davison battle for second. Van Gisbergen's checked out. One and a quarter second margin. There he is. Watch Will. Goes high. Switches for a look on the inside. He runs right up to the rear bumper. Looking for drive traction. Doesn't get it done. Now the focus is on turn six. It's going to be a victory for Van Gisbergen. All he has to do is pull it up straight at the end of the back straight. And it'll be win number 500 for Holden. Again, unstable in the rear for Jamie Wincup. A glimpse of Van Gisbergen, who's about to grab the chequered flag. First victory in Tasmania for Shane Van Gisbergen. 500 wins in the Australian Touring Car Championship and V8 Supercar Championship racing for Holden. And an awesome battle between Wincup and Davison that resolves in favour of Wincup and Slade, man of the match drive, has moved up in the final analysis and grabbed yet another position over Winterbottom. What a race. That was a classic race and what a return to form for this man who has shown extreme speed for Triple Eight Racing. The battle between Van Gisbergen, Winkup, Davison, Lowndes early and Rick Kelly. What a great drive also, but 500 wins for Holden and SVG in typical flamboyant style, burning those soft tyres out. There's David Couchy, all the guys from Red Bull who've now been a big, big part of the history and success of Holden and their non... I mean, it's just been a consecutive piece of motor racing history for Holden to do this, and this is a great drive by Slade to get up the inside on the final corner. He threw Mark it. Went on. It was a good drive, wasn't it? Threw it down the inside. He had tyre grip to burn. Mark Winterbottom was struggling, so he split the Pro Drive Falcons, but it's all about Shane Van Gisbergen, and congratulations to the Kiwi. Good throw it in the bin when you come in, those rear tyres are torched. Got to remember, he's still only 26 years of age, Shane Van Gisbergen. He's already had a mega start to the year with a win in the Bathurst 12 hour. He's recently been confirmed with a new McLaren factory deal with Garage 59 to continue in his GT program through Europe. His career's running hot. Great performance at the Australian Grand Prix. A brilliant performance today. And he picks up something very, very special for Holden. And you know, Neil, he will get out of the car. And as much racing as he does, he knows how important this is and how profound this win is for Holden and his new team. And a great demonstration of his skill and commitment and what this team bring to him in terms of discipline. That was a very disciplined, really high-class drive.
at a bogey circuit, at a place that he hasn't had that success. You can see the team's history and the way that they've run. That's 146 wins for Triple Eight Racing now and 500 wins for Holden with Shane Van Gisbergen being the lead man for Triple Eight Racing. And he got home in the end by just on one second. It's probably the biggest margin that we've seen all day of anything because it was going on out there left, right and centre. Some fantastic racing for position. As soon as Shane's ready, we'll go down there with Rihanna. Brilliant drive. Well done. Shane Mangersberg and welcome to the You Bet Victory Lane. What a victory here at Simmons Plains. I know this one is going to mean a whole lot to you. Yeah, that was a great race. Pretty exciting at the start and well, 500 wins for Holden, I think so. Awesome stat, but um, first proper win with the team. It was great racing with Jamie and Craig there and uh, so happy and thankful and, and great to see Techno up here as well. They've had a tough week with Steve leaving and for them to get a podium, so happy for them. Really nice word, Shane. We're going to come back to you and have another chat in just a minute but Jamie I know you would have enjoyed that that was a great battle that you had with your buddy Will Davidson congratulations on the podium again here in Tasmania yeah thank you great great strategy by uh, by the crew get me out we're in a bit of a hole down there in seven so um yeah to come out and lead Carl's not quite as quick as Shane he, he did a fantastic job but um today's about holding big congratulations to holding 500 wins it's uh you know there's there's not motorsport in Australia without uh, the, the Aussie icon in Holden and very proud to represent them. Once again, Red Bull Racing dominating the podium here at Simmons Plains. Will Davison, welcome back to the podium. Congratulations, and I know this means a lot for you and the guys with Techno, considering the last week. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. I uh, sort of kind of wish, you know, I was only working with Steve for a little bit of time, but it certainly would have been nice to uh, to share this with him. He's a, he's a great guy to work under. So um, this is for Steve, and uh, this is the start of many many results for this team at Techno. Um, absolutely fabulous bunch. Such such good fun to have. Have such a strong car underneath me so um yeah thanks to uh daryl lee and sticks and i got my sponsors doric and cowdroy along for the ride with me as well and uh first to many so that was fun as we've been saying all weekend this is such a very special victory 500 victories for holden they are such a huge part of the v8 supercars championship we've been joined by shane howard and of course Simon McNamara, Shane, I know that you'd like to say a few special words. This is a huge moment in our championship history. Absolutely. We'd like to congr congr congratulate Simon on such an amazing uh, achievement. 500 wins for Holden. Uh, congratulations to the fans and all the Holden teams. What a magnificent moment and place in history. So, well done and uh, thanks. Yeah. Simon, along the years, there's been so many drivers that have represented your brand so well. You know, Brocky, Scafey, Jamie Winkup, Craig Lowndes, now Shane Van Gisberg, and I know that you'd like to say a few words as well. Yeah, look, we just want to thank all of the drivers over the many, many years that uh, represented our brand. There has been some massive names, um, but it's been a fantastic effort. All of our teams have an amazing job. We love all of our guys. It's a big family at Holden, so we're very proud of that. Thank you so much, Simon. I know this is an emotional time for you and 500 victories in V8 Supercars and the Australian Touring Car Championship. A, spe a special gift on behalf of V8 Supercars. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the Brad Jones, race, Brad Jones Racing Boys, Jason Bright, Tim Slade, I mean, you didn't win it, but it, you made it very entertaining, both of you guys, carving through the field. Different strategy again by BJR to get it done and uh, both of you inside the top ten. Awesome job. That was a lot of fun, right? That was, uh, that was good racing and um, you know, everyone sort of gave racing room. You know, it was good to do a race where we haven't got a minimum fuel drop and uh, you can run a bit of a different strategy because you know, that's what you get. You get guys coming through at the end with better tyres and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, Slady, mate, you, know, you were carving them up there <laughs> as well. Probably heard a little bit, you, both your, your pit stops were just a little costly, but um, you know, it, uh, it came through in the end. As I say, that strategy working, having good tyres, being able to race guys like that, uh, it looks like you both enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, definitely the most fun I've had for a long time. You say about the pit stop, you know, the guys are geniuses, so um, we'll forgive them for a little bit of tardiness in the stop, considering the race car and the strategy they gave us. So, um, no, nah, it's really, really awesome. You know, like I said, it, it was an awesome race car, and it's a big relief. You know, I said to the boys on the in-lap there, um, it's actually uh, considering, I feel like a race car driver again, I was considering, you know, maybe taking up salesperson position with Freightliner trucks or something like that. But I'm sure you'd be good at that too. No, nah, no, nah, not as good as you, Murph. But uh, no, nah, I think I'll stick to the race car driving stuff, at least to the end of the weekend. All right, do it again tomorrow, fellas. Cheers, mate. Yeah. Jason Bright with Tim Slade there and Greg Murphy. That was a fantastic drive, boys. Really enjoyed it. Brighty got home in sixth. Tim Slade in eighth there. 
the results for you. Race number four, Tire Power Tasmania Super Sprint. That was a cracking race, folks. One second the margin between Gizzy and his teammate Jamie Winkup in the end, and a whole bunch of stories attached to it. Back on the podium there for Will Davison. That's a bright spot. Also a bright spot for Rick Kelly. Incidentally, it was uh, fastest lap of the race for Will Davison. Garth Tander, there were a couple of chunks out of the corners of that car. Unfortunately, Lee Holdsworth didn't convert that fourth, ended up down in 12th. James Courtney in 13th. And looking further down there, Fabian Coulthard couldn't get that car turned and he was suffering at the hands of the pack when they got down to the hairpin. And unfortunately for Scotty McLaughlin and everybody at Wilson Security, Gary Rogers Motorsport, that problem with the butterfly pre-race, clean bowling, what should have been a very strong result. It's time now for the race four podium. Ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce the winning drivers for race four of the 2016 championship here at the Tire Power Tasmania Super Sprint. In first place from Red Bull Racing Australia, winner of the 500th Australian Touring Car Championship race for Holden, Shane Van Gisbergen. In second place from Red Bull Racing Australia, Jamie Wincup. And in third place from Darrell Lee, Team Darrell Lee Sticks, Will Davison, ladies and gentlemen. And our Castrol Edge winning team member from Red Bull Racing Australia, pretty happy about it too, Matt Cook. To present the third place trophy, dealer principal from FRM Hino, Mr. David Mills. Our second place trophy from Chris Alish, head of fundraising for Prostate Cancer Foundation Australia. The Castrol Edge winning team trophy, Mr. Joe Laws, chairman of Tire Power. And the winner's trophy today, the CEO and naming rights partner from Tire Power, Mr. David Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2016 V8 Supercars Tire Power Tasmania Super Sprint race for podium. And after that tasty race, there is a very tight margin in our points table. It's very early in the championship to be talking points, but have a look on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. It's just two points between Shane Van Gisbergen and Jamie Wincup. Rick Kelly's well in the game. How about Cam Waters in fourth position at the moment in the Monster Ford, followed then by Will Davison. There's just 80 points across those top five guys. It's setting up a great scenario for us. That was an epic battle between these guys. The strategy that they pulled with Wind Cup to get him in clear air early was very impressive. Let's relive some of the great moments in race number four of our championship with our highlights package here. There's uh, Lee Holdsworth leaping off the line out of the second row of the grid and lost a lot of ground down there at turn two on cold tyres when he ran wide. But it was on for young and old right from the very beginning and Wind Cup showed an immediate pace. Went blazing straight through the pack and was able to use the open air and good tyres with the undercut when he flinched and came in early. A lot of passing opportunities made good down the inside at turn six. And there were some wild moments of people skating up to the wall on the exit of turn number three. Lowndes in early. Probably didn't quite have the car balance and that was costly on the pit lane departure. Understeer and running wide. Mark Winterbottom also ended up being squeezed wide on the exit by Craig Lowndes and that was costly for him. He overshot in the pit, he didn't get it cleanly off turn two and another problem there for Fabian Coulthard up at the hairpin and there's the second problem that basically added to a big time deficit for Mark Winterbottom and have a look at that left rear rim on Will Davison's car when those tyres aren't pressured up Andre Heingartner off the road down at turn two so that was Will squeezing every bit of performance battling on cold tyres through turn three and then this great moment between the Red Bull Holdens Win Cup versus Shane Van Kisbergen nothing in it at least they're painted the same so it's hard to see when they've touched inside the garage at Red Bull nobody's breathing as they watch this stuff up high and made it easy Jamie Wincup with Van Gisbergen down the inside meantime Pye and Courtney there were a couple of rat-a-tat-tats here and ultimately James shuffled down the inside that might be looked at by race control post race dropping the right rear off the corner of turn seven there was uh, Craig Lowndes a lot of people overshooting down here when they came down to the hairpin. That was an awkward moment between Tander and Bright. They've had one or two headbutts over the years, particularly at this racetrack. And here it is again from the other angle. 
It's a little bit awkward depending on what trajectory you're taking down there. Sometimes the two cars meet up on the other side. Here's the battle involving Will Davison getting down the inside of Craig Lowndes. He made it stick at turn number six. And that was a nice job. By this stage, Lowndes was starting to battle with tyre grip. Bright pitted later than most of those that he was racing in this pack. He had available grip, but he used it very, very wisely. Slade Ditto, he stopped on lap number 29. Bright stopped on 21. The guys inside these bunkers at Team BOC and Freightliner Racing, they had very fast cars on Young Rubber. And look at Bright here. The way he came off the corner here, we were riding in the rear bumper of the Falcon at the time, and we took that shot and showed that Bright, he had tons of exit pace and nowhere to go. It was all going on at the other end of the straight when they got down to turn six. And finally, after some bump and grind with a little bit of hip and shoulder in there as well, Jason Bright was able to sneak down the inside and get it done. But victory went to Shane Van Gisbergen. Holden win number 500. The first win in Tasmania for the Kiwi and a great performance by Will Davison on screen here as well. A thoroughly enjoyable car race. But in the end, saw Van Gisbergen prevail over Win Cup, over Davison. All Triple Eight race engineering built cars, and the first non Triple Eight car was Rick Kelly in position number four. And the great news is we do it all again tomorrow. Race number five will be held over 200 kilometres. It'll be more of the same on the Dunlop soft tyres. Looking forward to that one. championship race is also the 100th championship race win for Craig Lowndes. What a superstar. And that's an important one for Holden, the first manufacturer to win 400 races.